All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect with the one, the only. This man is the jack of all trades. He is also a co-host on Hold On Wait a Minute Play a Podcast alongside Teddy Long, but we're going to wait we're going to let him tell that story. DJ Tony Snow, how are you doing this evening? Yeah, I'm doing great, guys. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for having me. Hey, man. I got to say you are most certainly welcome, man. I got to say I've been checking out a lot of your stuff, man. I got to say you have done so much within the music industry and the wrestling industry as well, man. It's absolutely phenomenal. Oh, man, I appreciate it. I'm just trying to stay busy, you know what I'm saying? But the one thing I got to ask you, man, like what actually inspired you to get into the enter- uh, sorry, the entertainment industry initially? Well, um, <clears throat> it's, I got a crazy story, man. I've actually, when it comes to the entertainment industry, it's, like, it's almost like I've we in five different lives all together in one. Um, I, it's starting out, let's go back to the beginning. Um, I'm, I'm on the autism spectrum. Uh, I was born <coughs> with the inability to speak. I was nonverbal until I was six years old. Um, and so it's like words were always kind of hard for me to get, but music always made sense to me. Um, whether it was my grandparents listening to, you know, Yanni or or even old school Christian music that they listened to back in the day, or whether it was me turning on the radio in the 80s as a kid and hearing he would listen to the news. Um, and music always made more sense to me uh, than words made to me. So uh, as early on as a young child, um, music's always been a part of my life. And I gotta say, man, you know, going on from having such a you know uh, to having such such you know like issues as younger, man, you've gone on to do tremendous things. Yeah, I appreciate that, yeah, and, you know, I just, I, I'm trying to use myself as an example, um, especially the kids that might be dealing with the same things I was dealing with as a young child, you know, at times it just seems like the world may not understand you, you may not know what's going on, but, you know, I'm living proof that, it's, you know, if you're kind to people and you work really hard, that amazing things can happen to you no matter, no matter what your advantages or disadvantages you think you may have. And it's the truth, man. You know what I mean? It just proves anything is possible. Yes, sir. It improves. So, um, I, yeah, I, I went all the way through um, high school, graduated, moved to Texas. Um, and as soon as I got to Texas, I was got here when I was like 18, almost 19 years old. And um, just been working in the Texas music scene ever since, man. Uh, one thing led to another. Uh, and a situation, uh, I guess you could say, a combination of happy coincidences led to me DJing for Paul Wall back in the day. And then, you know, as they say, the, the rest is history. And I got to say, Paul Wall is phenomenal, man. I think uh, no matter what, a- a- any if you don't know Paul Wall, you most definitely heard his collaboration he did with Nelly back in the day. Grills, man, that was my jam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's still the jam, man. You know, I'm still an active DJ, and I'll tell you, I, whenever I play that song in the club to this day, it always gets a pop. Everybody loves it. And and I, I bet you Paul Wall loves it as well, man. I guarantee you he's going to be eating. That's going to be feeding his family for many, many years to come. Dude, it, yeah, I'm about to say, like, he's good, his kids are good, his grandkids are probably good, his great-grandkids are probably good. So, yeah, I'm sure he loves it. And also, man, another amazing individual you had, you had the opportunity to DJ for is actually Lil Flip, man. I was wondering, how did yourself and Lil Flip get connected? Well, I've known Lil Flip for years, man, and it started out with kind of we were around each other and around the same people. I knew the same people that he knew, and vice versa, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but then I really started working hand-in-hand with him seriously on music probably about six years ago, maybe six and a half years ago. Um, and for a while, I actually lived with Flip uh, for a little over two years, and I was pretty much like his in-house engineer and studio guy because, you know, he's got a home studio, and even when he doesn't have a home studio when he's on the road, uh, he's always got relationships with recording studios. Because Flip's always recording something, man. He's, whether he's doing features, whether he's recording something for him, a project, um, he's got so many things that are just recorded and sitting that one day if he releases it all, man, it's going to be crazy. But he's always working. And so when I lived with him, when we were at the house, you know, he had an in-house engineer, in-house producer all the time. He took me on the road with him. I was in the booth with him anytime he'd be on the road. 
he called me his lucky charm there for a while because, you know, every time he he um he converse with me in the booth, he would just kill it with me. And so, um, yeah, man, it, it just you know you we we've always been there's always been mutual respect between the two of us. And when I started working with him, um, he invited me to come and live with him because we got along so well. We had such good chemistry, and uh, we've been tied ever since. I've uh, been representing his label um, for about six years now. And i got to say as well, man, I had the opportunity to interview Little Flip a few weeks ago, man, and he actually uh, he actually brought you up and talked about you as well because I ended up bringing up his uh, his podcast that he does, and he ended up bringing up your podcast as well, saying that he was actually the one of the first guests actually on Hold, a, Hold On A Minute Play Us. So he actually showed you some love during the interview. Yeah, oh man, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's big bro, man. And um, it's crazy. When this pandemic started back in March, everybody was like, you know, what do we do? You can either, there was, there was, you could do one or two things. You could just hunker down and sit at home and just live in a world of fear and be uh, reactive instead of being proactive. Or you could be proactive. You could take your, what your future is and, and everything um, by your, you know, by the horns, if you will, and that's what Flip did. He started his podcast right when the pandemic started. You know, he was like, "Okay, well, we're going to be in the house. I want to be productive. I know all these people we can use as guests." Blah blah blah. And so, you know, he got his podcast. It's an award-winning podcast, even though it's only been out for one season. And um, and yeah, he's one of one of our uh, the, the the guy that's launching. He's you know our investor in launching. Um, behind me and Teddy's podcast. I, I brought Teddy along to, to Texas. Um, actually, SWE Fury, which is a, a wrestling promotion that I work for, I'm the, one of the producers and the music director. Um, <clears throat> Teddy Long is our general manager. And so I brought, when he was in town for his show, I brought him to the Flips podcast. And at, at this point, Teddy and I had filmed a couple episodes of the the podcast we were just a few at Hill and I brought Teddy by there and man he just he saw Flip's podcast and his studio his set and he was like man dude Flip this looks great you know me and Tony are doing a podcast and I, w I want you to do our podcast too so he came on as a guest and the next thing you know he's you know basically the executive producer of our whole podcast so and also as well man I also noticed that you actually released a compilation album titled Smoke Lahoma, man. I was wondering, what, what's the story behind that phenomenal comp compilation record? And, of course, where can we actually snag ourselves a copy today? Yeah, you can go on um, my bandcamp is djtonysnow.bandcamp.com. And I've always loved putting together compilations and, and mixtapes and things like that. You know, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. But I was always the kind that would sit there and, you know, record my local radio with my CD or with my cassette recorder, you know, with my tape deck and make my own mixes. I've always loved making my own mixes. So I started with this kind of series. Um, I did one a few years ago called um, Winter is Coming. And then I followed that up with the North Remembers. And then I moved to Oklahoma uh, last year. And when I did, I decided, you know what, let's just put out a little uh, little project commemorating my move. You know, and I always told my homies that I turned Oklahoma into Smoke Oklahoma. So I came up with some artists, friends of mine, that, you know, let's do a compilation of stoner songs. And I ended up Devin the dude, first one, the first person I called. And he, we put a song called Do You Love Getting High on there. And... It's just been, um, it's still doing great numbers, man. I, I put Afro Man on there. I put, the, the, the cool thing about any of my compilations is you don't just hear from the mainstream artists like a lot of other DJs will put. I put on indie artists along with the mainstream artists, and I mix them in and out, you know what I'm saying, to where you can't tell the difference. Um, so, yeah, all my all my stuff's available. DJTonySnow.BandCamp.com. I did some stuff with UGK Records a few years ago. Um, that was just incredible. Uh, it's called a, The Resurrection of the Trill. Um, Y'all check that one out. Uh, but, yeah, man, I've just, 
I've just been fortunate, you know, I got to tour with Afro Man for a few years. Like I said, the first um, artist I worked with was with Small Wall, and the whole reason I got the job was to, I was there and I was ready, because the DJ he had with him that night, his uh, computer just died right in the middle of the set. And Paul Wall tried to buy time, he was inviting fans up on stage to take pictures with him and stuff, while the guy was trying to get his thing done, and finally, I just spoke up. I went over to see Ferris, Paul Wall's manager, and I was like, hey man, you know, I, I'm, I'm DJ Tony So. I've got most of his music on my computer already, you know. And next thing you know, I'm finishing up the show. And, you know, fast forward 15 years, and I'm on stage with Michael Watts at, you know, Texas Rap Fest. Hey, and where I'm in New York DJing for Pump Daddy, you know. And I got to say, man, it, by, the, by the sounds of that, man, that was fate. It sounds like that computer died for a reason. You know, most people keep their computers plugged in, so... The, the fact that he, the fact that it actually died that night, man, was an amazing opportunity and opened so many doors for you. Yeah, it was like when uh, Drew Bledsoe got hurt in the Super Bowl and Tom Brady got the ball, man. I was ready. And I ran with it. Hey, man. And when you said you actually, like, DJ for Puff Daddy, man, I got to ask you. Because, like, I, I, didn't, I didn't have this in the list. This is just some in, 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 improvisation here, man. But, man, what was it like just being up there DJing for Puff Daddy? Because that is huge. Man, it was crazy. We were in New York. I was in New York with Swift. And we were doing a media run. Um, we did Vlad TV. We did This Is 50. We did MTV. We did a bunch of other stuff. And one of the things we got invited to do was uh, we were invited to um, to uh, Jane Kiss's album release party for the album uh, Top 5 Dead or Alive. And that was another thing where when I got there, the DJ that was supposed to be there hadn't shown up. And, you know, Flip actually spoke up and said something, and next thing you know, I'm setting up in the DJ booth. And, you know, they just kept bringing me thumb drives because she had special guests. So, you know, here comes Swiss Beats. Oh, man, this is awesome. You know, here comes, you know, the, the LLX. Here comes these guys, you know. And then they started doing all about the Benjamins, and next thing I know, I turn around to my left, and I see Puff Daddy come onto the stage in the fur coat. And walk right past me and stand there and you dab me up and then we do all about the Benjamins and and this club in Manhattan that was just packed to the ceiling. It was man, it was a I'll never forget it, man. It was crazy and I you know, me being a DJ and a networker, I wanted to get a picture with him, but as soon as the song was over, man, they treated him like the president. They came in got security grabbed him and they got him out of there. <laughs> he was in and out. And then, by the sounds of it, man, with that concert, you actually had, you really had no clue who was coming up on stage next, man. So, when you oh. turned around and saw, P P when you saw Puff Daddy, man, did, did, did you get that Jimmy leg and almost, and almost collapse a little bit? Or were you like, you know what, man, I'm DJ Tony fucking Snow, I can do this? Yeah, it was a little bit of both, man, because, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always confident in, in myself when I'm on stage. That's my environment. But at the same time, it was like... I was, it was almost like, I, I felt almost like I was ridiculously high all of a sudden, out of nowhere. You know what I mean? I don't know if that was endorphins or whatever, but it was like, okay, you know, we're here, let's do this. <laughs> here we go. What am I going to ever have, ever have a chance to do this again? So... I'm gonna be honest, man. You, you, so by the sounds of you, you had much more composure than me. I don't know if I saw if I was DJing and I saw Puff Daddy come on. I don't know, man. I think they'd have to find a third DJ because I'd pass the hell out. Well, you know, I was hanging out with Will Cease that afternoon, and he kept me good on some sour diesel. So, you know, I had my Popeye had his spinach. I was all good. Hey, man, it sounds like that. It sounds like that was a good thing, man. That you actually had that Popeye had his spinach that day. Yes, sir, definitely. And also, man, I noticed as well that you were actually part of a group called a called 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 the Backonomics, man. I was wondering what's the story behind that phenomenal group, and of course, how did you guys all meet? Oh man, Baconomics! You did your homework, man. I'm impressed, bro. Um, Baconomics is—it's a collective, man. We're like Wu Tang, except we're all just short, fat white dudes for the most part. That's how we started out, at least. It's gotten eclectic and it's more eclectic as it goes, man. It's been like a. There's always been the one of the. It's like Kiss, but with uh, hip hop. There's always been the two constants, me and Wesley Warhol, and then. We've had, you know, different members come and go during the years. Um, but, the, you know, the, the most recent iteration of Baconomics was myself, uh, Wesley Warhol, and then we had uh, Morris Day Tripper and Juice Bundy. And, um, man, we just literally, it was, we were trying to put out just like,
like some fun, irreverent music, man. Just stuff that we could have a blast with, but at the same time, Wesley's that great of a lyricist to where he could take something crazy and just make it sound really good. And um, so, dude, we, we did shows from we did a staple of Gathering of the Juggalos for about four years. You know, we'd get on stage and throw raw bacon out to the crowd, and, man, they would just go nuts. <laughs> it was just... It was, and, and it's weird because it was almost kind of political satire music too. Yeah, you definitely gotta check it out. Baconomics dot Bandcamp. And also, man, this is the one thing that I've been excited to ask you, man. Because growing up, I've always been a huge fan of this wrestling promotion, um, and, I, and I'm actually, I gotta say, I'm really happy that it's still actually on the air as well. But you are actually a music producer over at Ring of Honor Wrestling, man. And I have to ask you, how did, how did that come to be for you, man? And of course, what is it like working with Ring of Honor? Man, Ring of Honor, I love those guys. Shout out to um, Ian Riccoboni, Gary Juster, uh, Greg Gilliard, man. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I'm the same way. I was always a Ring of Honor fan growing up. And then when I finally started, <coughs> excuse me, when I started trying to cross over from hip hop to the world of wrestling, because I, I got to know a lot of the wrestlers from different events and made good relationships with them and they invite me back for other things. You know, I was there in the first Ring of Honor show I ever went to, I was guest of the Young Bucks, because I met the Young Bucks at the Gathering of the Juggalos. They were wrestling for Juggalo Championship Wrestling. And so I go to Ring of Honor, I meet these guys. They had a young dude that started wrestling with them named Foot Gordon. And he came to the ring to Game Over by Will Flip. And so I reached out to him, and I was like, hey, man, you're a fan of Flip, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, my name's DJ Tony Snow. And from that relationship, fast forward, and I'm doing music production for them, um, making entrance themes for their different wrestlers, making uh, segue and, and, and music for their TV, for going in and out of commercials. <coughs> I even did a, I produced a whole 10-minute long um, short that was featuring Flip Gordon for them too, and um, and they were they were like the first wrestling company that hired me. Um, and from then on, from then I branched out to the other ones. But uh, I I went on to the I, I was work started working with Ring of Honor right during the, like the peak of the Bullet Club era. So they were selling out shows everywhere, man. Every show that I worked for them um, was a sellout. You know, you had. The Young Bucks, yeah, Cody Rhodes, yeah, all the guys that are over in AEW right now, they were all Ring of Honor first. Um, and so I got that, the, the chance that gave me the opportunity. Um, I got to become good friends with Gary Juster, who he's one of the executives at Ring of Honor, and he's lived quite a life too. He's worked for every major promotion. He worked for at WCW under Eric Bischoff. He worked for WWF and WWE under Vince McMahon. And um, he just, he's always had a soft spot for me, man. And so thanks to him, um, I've gotten opportunities there that have led me to, you know, right now I, I work with SWE Fury Wrestling. Uh, they're based out of Texas as well. And, um, man, we have, you know, Teddy Long is our GM. Kevin Sullivan is one of our producers and does play-by-play. -play. I'm the music director and one of the producers as well. We have uh, Tim Storm was our champion up until just a couple weeks ago when Charlie Haas won it from him. Um, we just had a huge show in Carthage, Texas, where we brought in everybody, man. We had David Boy Smith Jr. there. We had uh, Lacey Von Eric there. We had Teal Piper, who's already Piper's daughter there. Uh, we we had just an incredible show. Bill Muertes was there. Mark Henry, the world's strongest man, he's uh, started to work with us. He was there as well, so... Uh, check it out online. It's SWE Fury. You can Google search them. We're on TV on Fight TV, and then we're on CW 33 in a ton of markets now. We're in about 30 million homes nationwide, and I um, I produce all the music for it. So, y'all you know, give us a check out. I gotta say, man, that's actually dope. I gotta say, first and foremost, man, from one wrestling fan to another, you are a god in my eyes. So I just gotta say that. Um, oh, man, <laughs> I have to say that, man. You know what I mean, but. When it was going back to the Ring of Honor thing, when you said you actually like, you know, how you helped create some of their theme songs, like what what are some of the notable wrestlers that you actually did the theme songs for? Because I'm actually uh, I'm actually really intrigued. Flip, uh, Flip Gordon, um, Marty Skrull, um, 
Yeah, uh, Tenille Dashwood, one of my favorite ones ever, Tenille Dashwood. Um, all my all my music, my my wrestling music production is all under Hot Tag Media Works, which is like my production company. So you can search that on YouTube, and a lot of stuff, different stuff will come up. I did something with Pete Dunn back when he was in IWR before he was with WWE. I did a theme for him. Um, the the girl with the shiniest wizard. I did a theme for her back in the day. So yeah, um, it's just it's fun for me, man, because I grew up, you know, glued to to the television and all that mattered to me. You know, people on the autism spectrum, they obsess about one or two things and they're good at those one or two things and the rest of the world just doesn't really matter to us so we suck at it and so for me the two things that i've always been good at and that have always worked for me and treat me is music and wrestling and so with someone on the spectrum the best thing to do for them when it comes to a job is to find the talents they have and then find a way for them to get paid to do it and that's what i do now you know I, i'm getting paid off of music and wrestling and so, you know, just they go hand in hand, um, and I've been fortunate enough to get as far as I've gotten with it, and I'm excited. I also do um, color commentary for pro wrestling as well, and in the past year, I got I got to call an NWA world title match, Nick Aldis versus Novi Bryant. Uh, I've gotten to meet, you know, guys like Jake Roberts, like called a match for Lance Archer, and Jake Roberts was there. I got to meet him. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here meeting all these kids that I grew up watching, and I just got to... You know, like last week, I'm on the way to his show. I'm in the backseat of the car, and it's me and the boogeyman. <laughs> and we're just sitting there talking about hip-hop, you know? And I'm like, man, what what life is this, dude? I'm getting chauffeured to a show with boogeyman. <laughs> you know? And we're talking about how East Coast rap is better than West Coast rap. You know? It's crazy, man. And I got I, I got to say as well, man. Like like I said, man, you you're doing phenomenal things, man. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna be honest, man. Myself and my team, we were actually stumped on what to ask you because you had so much information to just digest and put together an interview. So I try my yeah, best man, to pick dude, up I've some of the best I've done everything, man. I've done I've done stand up comedy. I've done acting. I've done uh, I was a bail bondsman for a year and a half. You know, I've done. I've lived, like I said, I've lived about five or six lives in one, and one day I'm going to make a life story, and people are just going to be blown away. It's like the talented Mr. Ripley, except I actually did all this stuff, and I didn't kill anyone. <laughs> At least not yet. All jokes, all jokes aside. <laughs> I might be like Marty Jannetty and end up going crazy and, you know, talking about it on Twitter afterwards. I, I got to ask you, man, when you just brought that up, man, do you think he actually did something like that? Because I don't know, man. Like, he just seems to go on a lot of rants, man. I, I personally think he might just be talking talking some crap just to get a little clout or something like that. Yeah, I brought it up uh, over the weekend at a show. We had uh, East Texas Wrestle Fest, and I brought it up around some of the vets, and they all seemed to think that it was a work, and a lot of them knew Marty. I just thought it was hilarious that <laughs> out of all the things you can say for attention. Yeah, because you never know. There's no, there's no, there's no stat. The statute of limitations are unlimited for murder, so like you better hope yeah, nobody died in a hotel room. Me. Like they can come back and get you whenever they want. Yeah, they'd be like Marty Jannetty. Well, guess what? Suplex your ass to the cell, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Super geek. Oh man. <laughs> but as we already saw mentioned quite a few times during throughout this interview, man, that you were actually the co-host over on uh, Hold Hold On Wait a Minute Playa. Uh, podcast, Hold on man. a minute, play it. Hold on a minute, play it with Teddy Long. Yes, sir. But I was wondering, man, if you can tell us a little bit more on how can we actually tune in and check that out. Now, it's, the funny thing is, we actually, like I said, we did a few episodes uh, that was just myself and Teddy, and we did it over over streaming. And then we were uh, approached by you know some people who wanted to invest in it because they liked the chemistry that Teddy and I had together on on screen and and you know teddy's the credit behind teddy's name and how much of a how much of an influence he's been on not just the wrestling world but entertainment period civil rights pop culture you know and when i told when i talked teddy into doing this podcast he had no idea that he was such an icon in the hip-hop world much less you know anything other than wrestling um you know, and, and I'll never forget that not I introduced Teddy to Mike Jones and Mike hugged Teddy like he was his long lost dad. You know, oh my gosh, Teddy Long, come here. You know, it was it's crazy the impact that Teddy's had on these people's lives. And so we started doing this show, man, and we worked together great on it because, you know, we have a guest on every episode. We've got 13 episodes filmed since we actually 
obviously, you know, did the whole production. You know, we've gone down to Houston. Um, we've, you know, filmed stuff on the road. We have 13 episodes in the can, and we've interviewed everyone from, you know, Jazz and Rodney Max to the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Um, and then there's, a, you know, Flip, and then there's a couple others that we can't even mention. Um, you know what I mean? But they're just, it's been a shock the world when they drop. And so, um, yeah, we, it's, you know, I ask questions about, I ask, I ask the guest questions and then Teddy usually brings up stories that he has with the guests. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's kind of a variety show and a talk show in one. I think you're going to dig it, man. And also, man, I gotta ask you, what is next for DJ Tony Snow other than the podcast? Because I know, man, like 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 we just mentioned, you're you're living five lives in one, man. So, like, is there anything else you're got you have going on? Anything else you want to talk about or promote while we still have you here live on the Canadian airwaves? Yeah, man. Uh, first of all, thanks again for having me, man. I love Canada. Um, you know, I, I shout out to Great North Wrestling up there in Ottawa. Um, you know, I just. If it wasn't so cold almost all year round, I'd spend a lot more time up there. But I always get love in Canada, so so shout out to Canada, man. But yeah, man, I've you know I'm, I'm at the stage in my career. I just turned 39, and I've spent so much time on the road traveling, and I really hate traveling. And it's funny that I I hate traveling so much, and yet I've chosen two different career paths that require nonstop traveling. Isn't that just? <laughs> um, <laughs> But so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at winding down in my active career. I'm still going to work in pro wrestling, but I'm looking at transitioning over from, you know, actively DJing and being on the road nonstop when there's not a pandemic to working as consultant doing, I've had people that have for years, people have been asking me to manage them for years and it's just the time was never right. Um, and so I'm at the point now where I feel like the time is getting right. And so I'm working with a couple of artists. Um, a couple of them I can't mention yet, but one of them I can mention is uh, Lil Wayne. He's from uh, from Mississippi, from Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, he's part of Trill Gang, who was Pimp C's uh, crew, his boss that he had. Uh, rest in peace, Pimp C. He was a big part of my life and a big influence on it. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've got the honor of working with him. Uh, we're going to be pushing one of the singles. We're about to drop, um, doing some music videos. We're just going to, you know, get him out there. Um, like I said, you know, with the, the world that we're living in now is different than it's ever been before. And you can either be proactive or reactive, you know. And I spent too long in my life being reactive and letting my situation uh, dictate what I do. You know, I'm going to be proactive now and I'm going to dictate my situation, you know. Um, and that's one of those parts of it. Um, is working with this young man. So y'all check him out. It's L-I-L-W-A-Y, Lil Way, and he's part of Trill Gang. So he's got music videos out on YouTube. Um, search for him on Google. He's on Reverb Nation. But we're going to be we're gonna be getting him out there, man. As Tim said, man, we're going to be putting it in, in the face. So you're going to hear about him soon, very soon. And also, uh, DJ Tony Snow, this is actually the time in the interview, man, that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And, of course, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything Tony Snow if they're not already doing so. Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, you know, shout-out to you for having me on. appreciate you guys. And, um... And, you know, all my supporters that are listening out there, we've been promoting this for a while, so hopefully they're all tuned in. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And, um, man, shout-out to uh, Teddy Long. Shout-out to Flip, um, of course. Shout-out to, um, you know, SW Fury. Y'all check us out everywhere on SW Fury. You can just search for it. Um, and some of the it's, it's Texas-style wrestling, man, and it's good stuff. If you remember the, the days of the Von Erichs, it's kind of a throwback like that, you know. Um, and they're doing some great things. So to Tom Lance and Jason Jarrett, got out those guys there at SWE. And, uh, yeah, man, everybody that listened in, y'all can follow me. And DJ Tony Snow on all social media. I'm the original Tony Snow. I am the Tony Snow. You know, I don't. it's just DJ Tony Snow is all you got to look up for. Um, and if you go on my, my Instagram is DJ Tony Snow, you'll see a picture of me and Flip at uh, MTV right there so you know that it's me. Um, and so add me on all those 
all uh, social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I'm everywhere, man. Um, DJ Tony Snow on all all different outlets. Um, so, yeah, uh, thanks again for having me, man. It's been a blast. I appreciate it. Hey, man, you are most certainly welcome, and thank you for just giving us a little bit of your time this evening. I got to say, Tony, thank you so much again, man, and most definitely have yourself a wonderful night, and I hope down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Man, I've got so much stuff in the works coming up that I can't talk about yet, so I would love to be on sometime here in the future when I can't talk about it all, you know what I'm saying? I just, all I can say, man, you know, I'm going to shock the world, bro, get your popcorn ready, you know? One of my homies is like, Tony Snow, man, you, you turn it into a goat. You're going to be like the DJ Khaled of Texas. And I'm like, man, you know, I, I'm, I'm good just being Tony Snow, but let's get it. <laughs> hey, man, most definitely. But we're connected, man. So whenever you, you can talk about it, make sure you hit me up. And we'll, de we'll definitely get you on for a second round. Well, let's get it. I appreciate you, man. You're, um, likewise, man. Thank you so much, Tony. Have yourself a wonderful night. All right. Have a good one.